two cables are RG58, which is also a 50 ohm cable. Its power handling capability is considerably less than RG8, and the loss in RG58 is considerably more. The amount of signal you lose because it's heating this plastic piece, the dielectric, because the current through the conductors is losing a little bit because of their resistance, uh, it is simply higher in the smaller cables. Gen the general rule is the smaller the cable, the more the loss. The other type of cable, which falls more or less midway between RG8 and RG58, is a newer type of cable called RG8X or Mini RG8. Uh, it is not exactly in the center of uh, the graphs that you would have for power handling and loss. Nonetheless, you can get away with a few more feet of RG8X than you can RG58. Uh, RG8X is about the size of RG59 cable. RG59 cable you may use on a dipole. It's a 72 ohm cable. You do not want to make a habit of using it probably. I think the 50 ohm cables will serve you a little bit better overall, and you can use them for more kinds of things. Uh, the reason you can use the 72 ohm cable is that the mismatch is not all that great if you happen to have it attached to a dipole antenna, which at a uh, quarter wavelength or so above ground is about 72 ohms. Uh, the mismatch uh, gives you a, visual, uh, I mean, sorry, a VSWR of 1.5 to 1, which is not unacceptable, not the best, but uh, nonetheless usable. W0AT, repeater. Kansas City, Missouri. This is N0RJ and W0RR, the Heart of America Radio Club Net. Um, those are the coaxial cables that you run into most often. There is a newer type of cable. Uh, it uh, is, uh, well, I guess I've got to mention the brand name. It's Belden 9913. There is uh, a copy or two of this cable out on the market by other manufacturers now. This is a new type of cable that is uh, low-loss flexible cable. Uh, its plastic dielectric is considerably different than uh, what you experience in other types of coax. The loss in this cable, the signal loss as it travels down the cable, is uh, quite a bit less than RG8. So it makes a pretty good cable for, say, a, a 2 meter or 440 antenna where you have to run uh, any length of cable at all. I use it uh, for runs as short as 50 feet and for as long as about 150 feet without uh, too much signal loss. One of the things I have talked about here is the loss in the cable, and that's something you need to be aware of. Um, your signal will decrease as it goes through the cable because the cable is not perfect. It has some resistance. Resistance is in two forms. One, the resistance of the conductors, and as you studied in your original, uh, when you originally studied for your license, you noticed the resistance is inherent in all wire. The bigger the wire, the less resistance it has, and that's better for us in this instance. The other resistance that, ex that exists in coaxial cable is in the dielectric. It's leakage from the inner conductor to the outer conductor, and it's very small, but it becomes quite significant as the frequencies go up. So where a cable that might give you almost no loss between your radio and your antenna at, say, 40 meters might give you a significant amount of loss at 2 meters or even more loss at 440 to the point where you may be putting 30 watts out of your transmitter and only getting a few, maybe 2 or 3 watts to your antenna if, say, you ran a long length of RG58 cable. We haven't talked a lot about the uh, ladder line, uh, balance line kind of lines. Uh, they are quite useful, especially with uh, the uh, non-resident tuned antenna systems. I think you've seen these at field day where you have about 66 feet one side or the other of a center support uh, thing as an inverted V type antenna or a dipole type antenna. Connected to the center of that, you may have some 450 ohm feed line coming back to an antenna tuner. This is a very popular type of antenna. It works very well, and uh, for the high frequencies, it's quite useful. The twin lead type of line is useful even at VHF frequencies. If you remember early on, uh, television antennas, which are receiving VHF 
type frequencies, use Twinly, that little brown stuff that you used to hook up to the back of the TV set before cable came around. The uh, Twinly lost its popularity of VHF because it uh, tends to have a lot of signal loss when it gets wet, when it's brought near metallic objects like the mast of the uh, supporting the antenna, or when it collects a lot of dirt on the outside, it can have a lot of loss. This led to a newer type of balance line cable for television, which was shielded twin lead, which did much better. And uh, it was not built for transmitting. You could transmit through it, but uh, the power levels would have to be pretty low, to, and it really didn't ever, didn't ever catch on. Plus, the complications of having to make uh, matching arrangements at the transmitters, almost all of which were fixed for coaxial cable and 50 ohm loads. The uh, balanced cable, though, has one very, very strong advantage, and that is that when it is clean and not brought near metallic structures, it has very, very low loss. The uh, best type of transmission line we have from the loss standpoint, in other words, getting as much of your signal to the antenna as you can, is an open wire feeder, and you may have seen these where there are two wires in parallel. They're separated by some sort of plastic phenolic or some sort of insulator spreader to keep them the same distance apart. A lot of these so-called, these were the original ladder lines, and a lot of these have an impedance of around 600 ohms. The complication arises in that that has to be matched to your transmitter, hence an antenna tuner is generally required these days. Very few transmitters have the built-in uh, matching arrangement and, and balancing arrangement to uh, feed uh, parallel line directly. Some of the older ones, I believe, did. That leads us to another subject. You see, a transmission lines can get very complicated. Uh, once you talk about transmission lines, you almost have to talk a little bit about antennas and a little bit about uh, what's feeding the transmission line. And the subject is balance, and we won't discuss that this evening unless you want to, but that is the device that uh, allows you to go from a unbalanced sort of line, which is coaxial cable, to a balanced sort of line, which is the uh, parallel wire sorts of transmission lines. Uh, one thing that you need to be aware of, though, in any transmission line you put in is lightning protection. The last thing you probably want is for lightning to come into your ham shack. And one of the ways it could come in is through the antenna and down the transmission line. So anytime you route a line into your ham shack, some sort of lightning arrestor is uh, is really a very good idea. Matter of fact, the electrical code requires it. Many people don't do it, but it's really asking for trouble. There are plenty of lightning arresters available, already built. Uh, those available for coax, the ones for balanced line, are a little bit harder to find, but they are they are in existence. And the other thing with coaxial cable, you really want to do is make sure it has a good ground at the lightning arrestor and at your uh, transmitter. That'll help prevent lightning damage as well. And one of the things you can always do, if you suspect lightning's in the area, is simply unplug it from your radio. That'll help, too. Um, that's really probably jawbone quite a bit about this. So I think at this point, uh, we'll turn it back to Nat. And if there are any questions, we can uh, discuss those as time goes on. This is in zero RJE. Well, thank you, Lloyd, very much. That was very informative and interesting. And if anybody has any questions, Direct them uh, directly to Lloyd. This is W0RR, Heart of America Radio Club Net. And uh, anybody with any questions, just ship them over to N0RJE and we'll stand by until you're done. Check in WA0OTV, Bob and Raytown, with two questions. We're doing check ins later. I have two questions. Go ahead, Bob. This is N0RJE. My first question is why? Does my microphone cord position, why is my microphone cord position so critical in VHF operation? That is my first question. My second question is, is there any harm or what harm can be done by taking advantage of parallel resonance with power lines on HF transmission? WA0OTV. Okay, Bob, uh, both questions really relate back to antennas. Uh, let me answer your second one first. Uh, using the uh, parallel resonance of power lines is something you can do. Be aware, though, that the power lines 
are carrying a very hefty amount of 60 cycle current, uh, that can cross-modulate your HF signal, and uh, it's something to watch out for. Some of those power lines, especially the top line uh, in many power systems, also carry uh, a uh, uh, very low frequency uh, telemetry signal, around 60 kilohertz or so, I believe, and some people who work for the power company probably correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, that may also be a problem with, uh, with, your, with your transmission. Now, to answer your question about your mic cord, your mic cord may very well be a link that is very close to resonant at the frequency of what you're transmitting in VHF. As you know, a quarter wave at uh, two meters is uh, about a half a meter, so uh, you're, you're looking at um, 18, 19 inches. Um, it could be a half wave and also be resonant at uh, approximately 36 inches, so I suspect that it's uh, being critical is the fact that it is resonant, and as you move it, it makes your antenna directional. N0 RJ. W0AT, repeater, Kansas City, Missouri. Thank you. WA0TV, back to next. And the thing I'd like to add about that, Bob, is if your mic cord is resonant, that means that there's RF energy going up and down the thing when there really oughtn't to be. It might be getting into the radio, making hums and things like that if the grounding gets a little bit cockeyed in zero RJ. Roger, Lloyd. I understand it's normal for this particular uh, 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 type of radio I'm using. Thank you. John. Go ahead. Was there a question? This is N0RG. N0OAG. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, two items. Uh, I don't know if you touched on uh, Heliax, uh, when and where that uh, might be used. And then the second thing is Hardline. I've seen uh, people use the uh, 75 ohm hardline, um, like found in the cable TV business, uh, for the majority of the run out to the tower, and then uh, flex uh, like an RG8 or preferably a 9913 uh, from there on up to the antenna. Uh, could you expand on both of those? Okay, let's talk about it. Hard lines I did not touch on. Um, hard line, uh, I'm probably. Well, coming from the broadcast industry, hardline to me is rigid coax, which is made out of <laughs> two pieces of copper pipe, uh, one inside the other. But there is another form of hardline which is uh, a little bit more flexible, and you see it running all over town, in, as you said, in the cable TV business. Uh, that stuff is generally 75 ohm cable or so, and it's plentiful and available, and the mismatch when you use that, on a 50 ohm transmitter, a 50 ohm antenna with a 75 ohm cable in the middle is not uh, unacceptable. Uh, it's not what I would choose to do, but there again, uh, this is a hobby, and uh, by golly, we, we have our ways of getting by, and it really works very well, especially on the receive side, because most receivers have enough gain to make up for the fact that all of the uh, signal picked up by the antenna is not getting transferred to the receiver. So uh, it can be used very effectively in that, in that situation, and also on the transmit side, because again, the mismatch is not all that great, and given the, uh, the length of the hard line will determine just how much the mismatch is, because then it becomes a fairly, oh, not a complex mathematical process, but a nonetheless mathematical process to determine exactly what impedance you have your transmitter looking at. Um, hard line and Heliax are sort of intertwined, too. Heliax is a... Uh, type of line that is um, kind of roughly based on both flexible coax and hard line in that its outer jacket, rather than being a braided uh, copper sort of arrangement, uh, is a corrugated uh, copper tube so that it can be bent fairly easily. Um, Heliax has much lower signal loss than, say, RG8. Uh, Heliax comes in two varieties. One is air core, where the inside is merely a little spiral of Teflon or some other insulator to separate the two conductors, and the other is foam filled, which has a foam dielectric, not unlike foam RG8. Um, it is generally used when you have long runs at uh, VHF and UHF frequencies. Uh, the reason not to use it is its expense. Uh, it is very expensive compared to RG8 or some of the other more common coaxes. 